welcome to Austria. We're just a few miles from the Red Bull Ring, which will this weekend stage the Austrian Grand Prix. A huge race for Red Bull Racing, of course, because Red Bull puts this whole race on, owns the circuit. And of course, that also means it's an important weekend for Honda. Now, we're used to the Red Bull advertising slogan that Red Bull gives you wings, but actually it's Honda that has brought some airborne technology to bear in Formula One, and Scott Mitchell is here to explain what that's all about. So, what exactly has Honda Formula One engine technology got to do with jet technology? Well, you wouldn't think very much, would you? Um, I, took the, I took the pleasure in making the very obvious joke to Honda's F1 technical director, Toyoharu Tanabe, that um, maybe they'd uh, get the power upgrade that they're looking for if they just strapped a jet engine in the back. It's obviously not quite as simple as that. So the cool story, which which became official, sort of heard whisperings about it before, but Honda first mentioned officially for the first time before the French Grand Prix, was that their latest upgrade utilised a bit of uh, collaboration within Honda between the F1 department at Sakura and Honda's uh, jet engine programme. So Honda has an award-winning uh, small business jet, uh, I can't remember the exact model name, which means the HA420, but don't quote me on that. Um, and basically, this uh, this jet, which uh, which is ultra successful, and, and Honda is is very very rightly very proud of it, uh, features a twin turbine. Uh, technology. So the the actual in engine itself, it's not like uh, Honda's suddenly going to gain a load of power because their combustion engine is the same as what they've what, what what's currently flying around uh, Japan, America, and Europe. Um, it's basically it's it's the internal design technology, and there's a there, there's crossover between the the fundamentals of getting the the turbines working properly in a jet engine and and maximising the most from the turbocharger and the MGUH in the F1 engine. So that's so in the broadest possible terms, that's where the the that's where the inspiration has come from. It's the internal design of the turbo in the EMG 8 which obviously with these turbocharged V6 hybrids, uh, it's obviously quite important to get that right. And obviously in this V6 hybrid turbo era, there's been a huge amount of this attempt and this effort by manufacturers to apply different technology, some of it seemingly quite distant like the jet technology, but we've also seen combustion chamber technology from truck engines, that kind of thing, having a, a kind of tangential application in, in Formula One. But in terms of what this actually means, what, where are Honda with, with their engine package and what has this helped them to do that they wouldn't otherwise have been able to do? So as, uh, as we, we reported before the French Grand Prix, they've, they've already brought their spec free engine for, for, for this season, which is their second upgrade of the year. And it's very early in conventional terms, but it's actually broadly on schedule as far as Honda are concerned. And what they did in France, or what they had for France, I should say, is that they had a mostly upgraded turbocharger and combustion engine. That was the main focus of, of the upgrade. And last year, when they introduced their spec free, which came a lot later in the season, first rolled out in Russia, but actually only raced for the first time in Japan, featured a massive step forward on the MGUH side. And it's these two areas, MGUH and turbo, that have benefited from this jet engine collaboration. So on the MGUH and the turbo, both of them uh, are massively high speed rotation devices. Uh, it's 125,000 RPM that they're allowed to spin up to. But Honda has found it really difficult to reach that limit reliably. And that has huge implications. Obviously, first and foremost, it's a reliability risk. And uh, second, it's that whole in, in, interaction between the, the combust what the turbocharger does for the for the combustion engine and how it interacts with the MGUH and obviously how the MGUH operates itself. So an unreliable MGUH or uh, an unreliable turbo or a limited MGUH or turbo is fundamentally poor. Now obviously the way Honda designs internally its parts is a closely guarded secret, very confidential, but we understand that the broad, uh, the broad way of describing it is that the, it's, the, uh, it's the blades, the internal blades within the form the rotor basically, that it's, a, it's a, an aerodynamic design because it's all about how obviously air flows through those, how it spins up and how that all interacts. I don't pretend to be a genius about this, I can just go off of what, what gets explained to us. And what this has basically facilitated is, is a crucial step for Honda, first with the MGUH last year and now this year with the turbocharger, to be able to hit that 125,000 RPM and work properly and efficiently. High efficiency turbo and MGUH, which as you're probably better placed to explain than me, is absolutely crucial to the fundamental performance factors of a current F1 engine. Well, yes, there is an advantage in that although there's a limit to how much uh, electrical energy you can deploy, that's how much you actually remove from the battery and you can actually use some of the MGUH recovered energy directly, shall we say, so it's kind of free energy, which is extremely beneficial. That's very, very important. And obviously Honda has made some very significant steps, but 
if we had to pick where Honda is compared to Mercedes and Ferrari, which are the, the kind of standard setters in terms of engine technology, where do we think they are? Because coming into this season, we were quite confident that there'd be a good chance of a victory in, in Monaco. And actually, Max Verstappen did give it a good go, but we still haven't had a win for a Red Bull Honda, even though we've had a few podiums and consistent top five finishes. Well, obviously, they're not on Mercedes or Ferrari's level. And I'd wager as well that Renault's efforts and upgrades has pushed them very close. I don't think there's much to choose between Honda and Renault, but I do think Honda has taken a significant step forward and is not that far off of Mercedes now. I think we've got enough evidence over the first eight races of the season to say confidently, unfortunately, that the Red Bull isn't quite as potent a car as it was 12 months ago. So I think that is arguably the biggest factor in the why Rebel and Honda haven't challenged for victory. Mercedes have moved the goalposts from a car point of view now, not from an engine mm. point of view. So that has made the season so far tougher, Honda readily admits, than it expected it to be. I think they thought they'd have a, a win in Monaco on, under their belts right now and not just have two podiums and a third technical podium that they got in, in Monaco before Max Verstappen had his time penalty. So that's a shame. But it's what's encouraging is that not only does there's the work that Honda's done so far and all of this is well I say all of this it, part of this is is influenced by this jet engine collaboration inside at Honda is it's, it's these constant steps these building blocks basically to give themselves unprecedented levels of reliability in terms of the Honda package and what that does is that then allows them to pursue more performance and it's all about balancing up the power unit and having some like a it's going to sound like horrible business speak, but like a globally optimised power unit because the way that the the way the internal combustion engine interacts with the with the, the the turbocharger, the way the turbocharger then goes on to interact with the MGUH, how as you said, how you use the MGUH sort of on its own, how you use it in conjunction with the MGUK, all of this stuff is absolutely vital to the fundamental performance of of an F1 engine. The fact that Honda has now got to this level where it's it's now happy with that reliability side. It has the high efficiency parts that it's desperately needed for so long, but just hasn't quite been able to crack. I think that's important for the longer term as well as for the now. Yet that yes, it continues them making that step. They keep getting closer to the benchmarks. But the key is everyone was always looking as first year together, learning partnership for Honda and Red Bull in 2019, go for the title in 2020. You've got to keep those building blocks, have a proper foundation in place. And I think these upgrades are as much about giving Honda a better platform to build on than it is about giving them max, maximum performance right now. Well, the really important thing and the great thing for Honda is we do seem to be seeing this consistent progress. They're building step by step by step. They're not making as they did in the past some progress and then kind of sliding back down and having to do a different concept, a different approach. This is very, very encouraging for Honda. And as you say, the power units, they are kind of a virtuous circle, shall we say. So you improve one bit, that can have knock-on effects, and you kind of build that momentum. So very, very positive for, for Honda at this stage. Yeah, I'd say that, I'd, I'd almost go so far as to say it's almost linear, the Honda progress that we've seen over the last 18 months. Do you know, like since the McLaren deal fell apart, it's almost just been like this brilliant rise from Honda where it's just like, okay, there's not, it's not like they suddenly shot up and yeah, there you go, we're winning races now, but it's that, they've ticked things off, haven't they? You know, the fourth place with Pierre Gasly at the start of, of 2018, the hitting the target to convince Red Bull early, uh, early in 2018 as well, the upgrade at the end of the year that provided a big performance boost, getting a podium this year and further and further development. So it's been pretty much all good news from Honda's side. Well, big weekend for Red Bull and Honda this weekend. A home win for Max Verstappen last year. Long shot, maybe they can do it again. But good progress from Red Bull and Honda.